What we're going to do, I think, is, is talk about, um, you know, at, at, a, at a thematic level, how is technology uh, impacting retail and what is technology, what sort of what's happening today, here and now, from a technology standpoint in retail, and most importantly, I think, as all of you in, you know, I'm assuming most of you are either in retail or work with retailers, um, you know, how could interesting types of technology over the next several years impact your business and therefore how you should leverage it. We, I'm going to kick off with some perspectives on e-commerce. So it's, it's one dimension of technology, um, e-commerce, m-commerce, it's, re it's really both. Uh, and I'll, I'll specifically focus on e-commerce and then we'll have rest of the, uh, the other panelists come up and talk about different dimensions of, uh, some, you know, they'll build on some e-commerce related things, but also talk about uh, other aspects of, of technology, internet, mobile, software as a service, uh, technologies that could actually impact retail. So I will focus on, on e-commerce. So let me ask a question before I get started. Um, if you go back to 1995, how many internet users were there in the world? Any guesses? 1995, I know it was a wrong time ago, but I think most of you just looking around the room uh, were probably still, you know, were reasonably active in 1995. How many internet users in 1995? 100,000? Well, you know, little, little, you know, a few, few more than that. 1995. Amazon went public in 1997. Amazon now is the largest e-commerce company in the world. That was 15 years ago, actually. Okay, let me ask another question. How many, how many internet users do we have today in the world? Not in India, but in the world. Any guesses? This is definitely not an e-commerce crowd today. <laughs> Multiple choice. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> to give you multiple choices. Okay, so today there are actually 2 billion internet users in the world. And by the year 2015, there will be 3.5 billion people on the internet. So basically three years from now, we will have 45% of every human being who, li who, who lives in this universe. I should say in, in our world, not in the universe will be on the internet. That's a really big number, right? And if you go back to 1995, there were less than 50 million people on the internet in the world. In the year 2000, in the year 2005 is when we crossed a billion people on the internet. And today we have two billion people on the internet. So clearly, we have a very large number of people connected on the internet. And I just spent a week in the US last week. You know, it is remarkable. Everybody is on the internet, and they are on the internet all the time. Now, India obviously is very different, and I'll talk about where we are in India today. What's also interesting is if you look at this 3.5 billion people on the internet, 40% of them will come from Asia. In fact, almost all the net new growth in the world in terms of internet users will come from the emerging markets. Now, the rest of what I'll talk about is actually what's going on in India, uh, tied to both internet and mobile. There are 120 million internet users in India today. In fact, this data is about six months old. Now the number is actually a little higher. So 10% of India is online today. In the year 2000, there were 3 million Indians online. So we've gone from 3 million Indians in the year 2000 to 120 million Indians online today. And at 120 million, India is already the third largest internet user market in the world. China has about 500 million internet users. The US has about 250 million internet users. India at 120 million is already the third largest. And by 2015, actually that number, that should say by 2015, not 2011, we will cross 300 million internet users. So by 2015, and it'll probably happen earlier because everything in the internet happens generally quicker than what we think it will, India will be the second largest internet user market in the world, right? So we're talking about, although in a country of 1.2 billion, you can look at these numbers and say, you know, Rajan, it's only 120 million. It's actually a very big number for, you know, because of some reasons, uh, because of some things we'll talk about in a minute. So now if you look at this 120 million, What's interesting is what took about 15 years in the U.S. to happen, right, 1995 to about 2010, is happening simultaneously in India right now. 
So what do I mean by that? Well, e-commerce was actually a phenomenon that started in 1995. Amazon went public in 1997, and we would say by about 2000 in the US, e-commerce was reasonably well established. You know, it's not where it is today, which is, you know, it's huge in the US today. But e-commerce is pretty well established. In India, e-commerce is happening now. It wasn't happening in 2005. In the US around 2005 is when the mobile data revolution started, right? Well, the mobile data revolution is alive and well, and, you know, both Kumar and, and, and Abe will actually, you know, have, you know are, are driving that revolution here. Social is actually a phenomenon that's about four or five years old. But already in India, we have 50 million active social users. And for a company like Facebook, India is already the second largest market in the world in terms of number of users, right? So social is happening. Video, video is a phenomenon that's maximum five years old. Already in India, video is pretty well established. YouTube, which is one of the online video streaming platforms, has 33 million unique users a month. 1.5 billion videos are streamed in India every single week. That's a lot of videos, by the way. Right? That's just in India. And that's despite us not having the kind of bandwidth that all of us would like to have. And if you look at mobile internet and mobile data, the number of search queries that are coming from a mobile device, a feature phone, a smartphone, are growing 200% year on year, right? So not only do we have a large number of internet users in India, we are seeing all the things that have happened in the internet, global internet, over the last 15, 17 years, happen simultaneously in India. So one way I'd like to think about this, with, especially with people who sort of work in the web, is Web 1.0 and Web 2.0 Web 1.0 is like traditional content, straight up Yahoo type content, e-commerce plus Web 2.0, local mobile social happening together. The other interesting thing about the internet in India is the internet four or five years ago was largely a metro phenomenon, right? But what's happened really today is 48% of internet users in India come from towns with less than 10 lakh people. So this is not a metro phenomenon today. Internet in India is not about the top eight cities. It is rapidly, it has already penetrated towns with less than 10 lakh people. And if you look at this, you know, there's a lot of data on this slide, but what it shows is that the top eight metros only account for about 35% of the internet users in India today. So that's pretty interesting, right, for retail, because as you think about retailers and expanding retailers' reach, this obviously has very interesting implications. Now, this is actually, you know, why 120 million is a big deal. There are 50 million Indians who are in SEC A and B between 15 and 44. And if you are selling anything other than pretty much fast-moving consumer goods and phone plans, you know, voice plans, your addressable market in India is between 50 and 100 million people. 50 million people in SEC A, B, 15 to 44 buy all the cars in India. They buy all the flat screen TVs in India. They pretty much are the ones that have credit cards in India. So if you're in financial services, actually this 50 million people account for 70% of the value of the industry. So what's interesting is, although only 10% of the India's population is online, that 10% that is online is really the part of the population that has a very large percentage of the purchasing power for products outside of fast-moving consumer goods and probably you know, telecom voice plans. So if you're in the retail space and you're selling the products that are really applicable, let's say, to the first 100 million Indians, the internet and mobile are very, very important platforms already. So now let me now actually, and the rest of what I'm going to talk about is e-commerce. I'll go through this very quickly. Uh, global retail, $16 trillion last year. Global e-tail, or e-tail, m-tail, was about $680 billion. So about 4% of the entire retail in the world is now going through e-commerce. Interestingly, if you look at a market like China, that number is very close to the global number. China is already at 3.4% of total retail moving through e-commerce. In India, interestingly, that number is only 0.2%. And I'll share with you what that number translates to in terms of actual volumes. It's about a billion dollars last year. So if you, and this is excluding travel. So if you look at, if you exclude travel, you look at categories like books, apparel, electronics, 
you know, baby products and so on and so forth. In 2011, there was about a billion dollars worth of e-commerce that happened in India today. Right, and this actually looks at, and then if you look at the next three or four years, based on the growth rates that we've seen over the last 12 to 18 months, at a minimum, this billion dollar number will go to about $8 billion. So non-travel e-commerce in India will cross $8 billion by 2015. Now you can look at this $8 billion and say, you know, what's the big deal? Because, you know, retail is already at $500 billion, and let's say that's growing at, you know, 5 7%, 10%. It's still a small percentage. But you can look at it another way and say, this is $8 billion of internet-enabled products sold that actually were not being sold three years ago. Right? And if you look at what's happening in the internet space, there's a lot of excitement about e-commerce. And the reason is you know, these numbers are actually very, very large. And not surprisingly, consumer electronics and apparel will be 80% of e-commerce. So what we would say is, if you're in a business where you're selling electronics, where you're selling books, or you're selling apparel, you know, having a internet mobile strategy as part of your overall strategy is absolutely critical because these numbers are very, very large. And in fact, if you look at it another way, and you know, one of the ways we look at it is what are people searching for in the internet, right? Search queries. Not surprisingly, e-commerce related search queries are largely in today consumer electronics and apparel. So the largest category is consumer electronics by a factor of three. The second is apparel, the third is books, and then you can look at all the other categories, right? So e-commerce is already a billion dollars led by consumer electronics, apparel, and books. That number will go to 8 billion. And as it gets to 8 billion, you'll also see other categories like you know, baby products and so on and so forth actually emerge as important categories. This is some interesting data from the top 20 e-commerce companies uh, in India today. More than 50% of the orders are coming from non-metros. Again, it goes back to where the internet users are. This is a huge number, by the way, right? 50% of e-commerce transactions in India today coming from non-metros. 9,000 PIN codes served. And you can read some of the other, other statistics. So, so what, what's, what's very interesting here is if you're in the retail business and you're thinking about geographic expansion, right? you can either go put stores. Or you can think about, you know, you've got stores, you want to add stores, but you can get significant reach by leveraging the internet and mobile mediums. You know, there's been over the last probably 24 months, there's been a huge amount of, you know, uh, press coverage around the funding that a lot of the e-commerce companies have gotten, and now that's sort of cooled down a bit, and now there's, you know, a lot of, lot of press coverage about consolidation, et cetera. Look, I mean, these markets evolve, right? There's a lot of investment up front, then, you know, players get larger, there's consolidation, et cetera. But one of the things we look at is how much user activity and revenue are these companies driving, right? And this looks at Four of the players, and these are you know, statements that they've made, but because we work very closely with them, this is not data from Google, but data that, you know, from them. Monthly unique visitors, Snapdeal. So let's take Flipkart. Flipkart has seven million unique Indians who are going to the Flipkart site every month. That is more than any retailer in India, I think. There is no retailer in India that has seven million unique users. Flipkart this year will do north of 600 crores. In fact, they've crossed that run rate already. This is a company that is 24, actually now more like 36 months old. 36 months ago, Flipkart didn't exist as a company. Right? This year, they will do 700 crores of revenue. Products being sold online. Snapdeal is two and a half years old. Mintra is 18 months old, selling apparel online. Five million unique in visitors a month. This year we'll do 500 crores of revenue selling Nike shoes, dresses, accessories, cosmetics, etc. So, you know, what's very interesting here is well, what does this all say? This says that, well, you know what? Indians are buying online. And I think several of our panelists will talk about why is it that Indians are buying online and what does that really mean? You know, and we took one example, which is uh, we took one of the top three fashion you know, apparel-focused retailers, and try to look at, if you look at one of their stores, right, this is one of the top three, we don't, we're not going to give names, but one of the top three retailers are fashion apparel merchandise retailers. You look at one of their stores, what does that store do, right? 1,500 customer, 1,500 customers walk into their store, one store every day, one store. They do about 800 transactions a day. And the average order value is about 1,500 rupees, right? And monthly revenue from that one store is about three and a half crores. That is one store. 
Then we looked at one of the top three fashion e-commerce companies. This is comparing obviously one store of a retailer with the entire e-commerce company, right? But it's one interesting way to kind of look at this data. So that, that e-commerce company, and this is not the largest, it's one of the top three, instead of 1,500 customers coming in per day, has 1.6 lakh customers visiting that site. Look at the, the difference in the order of magnitude here. They're doing, instead of 800 transactions a day, 6,000 transactions a day. Interestingly, the average order value is 1,200 rupees, almost as high as the average order value of the consumer that's walking to a physical store. And a monthly revenue of 21 crores, versus a monthly revenue of a one store of 3.5 crores, right? So what this is saying is, if you're a retailer, at a minimum, you should think of e-commerce as one store. Actually, in this case, more like 10 stores. Right? So if you have five stores, you should think of it at least as one store, if not another two or three stores. Right? So this is not to say that you know, every retailer should only focus on e-commerce, but clearly this can become a very significant channel, we believe, for many, many types of retailers. Now, the last thing I'd, I'd like to end with here is offline retailers are actually the best position to win in e-commerce. And the best data that you have is that nine out of the top 10 e-tailers, e-commerce companies in the US are offline players, right? Because they have brands that are pretty well established. They have logistics that are pretty well installed. They know how to buy things. They know how to manage low margin businesses, right? They know how to do merchandising. So outside of Amazon, which is by far the largest, $34 billion of annual sales, all the other the next nine e-commerce players in the U.S. today measured by revenue are actually off large offline retailers that have built e-commerce businesses. So this is actually a very good thing because all of you that are running you know, mid-sized, large, offline retailers have the possibility to build very large internet mobile-based commerce businesses because you have capabilities that the pure play e-commerce companies really don't have. Because you've already built those kind of capabilities, right? And, and why this is really important is, by 2015, very conservative estimates show that almost 100 million Indians will buy things online. Today, there are only 120 million Indians on the internet, right? But if you look at just what percentage of Indians are buying online, that percentage will go from 11% in you know, 2010 to about 30%. And to give you a reference point, in China last year, 180 million Chinese bought online. 180 million Chinese. Chinese e-commerce market is over $100 billion today. Right? So India is obviously five, seven, eight years behind. So by 2015, we should get there. Probably the last thing I'll leave you with here is, we've talked a lot about e-commerce, but actually the impact of the internet and mobile on consumer buying starts long before e-commerce. Because what is happening in India today, and Abe and several others will talk about this, is consumers are doing a significant amount of research about products and services on the internet. And the internet and mobile are impacting the consumer decision behavior across the entire purchase journey. You know, from research, then they'll go into a store, they'll look at stuff, then they'll come back, then they'll do research. Increasingly, they're doing research in the store. So, Actually, being on the internet and having a great presence on the internet is very important, not only for you to be able to sell things online, but also to be able to impact consumer you know, in the very early stages of the purchase cycle. You know, we did some research on automotive, you know, which is like an industry where you'd say, well, actually, the internet shouldn't really matter. 50% of auto people who bought cars in India in the last six months did research on the internet. And of the people that did research on the internet, 60% of them changed their mind about what car to buy based on the research that they did on the internet. So for retailers, that's actually pretty important, right? Because consumers are going to change their mind or make decisions around preferences by doing research on the internet. So e-commerce is, is happening. It's happening at a very, very rapid pace. But the internet and mobile is important for many other reasons, one of them being these 120 million Indians who are all your customers, are doing a huge amount of research online.